Yeah, I got it. Uh, Patrick Roy, uh, I'm a firefighter. I've always wanted to be a firefighter. Uh, my father's been a firefighter for 40 years. My brother's on, and uh, it's kind of in the family. It's a lot of tradition, but best job in the world. The Pritchard, now Fox, to meet Deputy Valancourt. Also, be advised, Chief. Our boss is CRT-1 and Peter Rubin. Please remain calm as we are taking the firefighters on board. Back cap, we can get the water here. Flames shooting out into the sky from this prominent building in downtown Fitchburg. And pretty frightening last night as some copper actually fell from the top of the building. It went to six alarms, 13 communities here to help out. It's called the Johnsonia building. It's been renovated. Saving the building, though, proved very difficult as it burned out of control. Part of the roof crumbling to the ground. That's, that's the copper the face of the building. It's a real nice old building in the city. There's a lot of history to it, and a lot of the copper came down. We figured that would happen. That's why we kept that trucks out of the collapse zone. Guys did a good job. They had a lot of work to do. Uh, my dad was a firefighter. Uh, my uncle was a state fire marshal. Um, always interested me. I started out actually in my Massachusetts college after graduating from high school in uh, criminal law. And the fire exam was coming up here in Fitchburg in 1974. I went and took the exam, took an interest to the job, of course, seeing my dad do the job. Um, and uh, I scored high enough to get a job and came on the job in 1975 and basically been here ever since. To be honest with you, I, I thought it would be a good job. Uh, I never knew anybody that was a firefighter. There was no firefighters in my family. I just thought it would be an exciting job. It was something I just, like I said, uh, literally it was a calling. Uh, Best thing that ever happened to me. I, I've enjoyed 33 great years. Uh, never regret the path I've taken. Every day I come to work, I still enjoy coming to work. It's it flew by, and I have no idea where the time went. Uh, back when I was a kid, uh, there was a, a fire show called Emergency. Um, so dating back to when I was like eight or nine years old, I loved the show. Um, there was a show about LA County firemen, and uh, I got hooked in just watching what they did and how they helped people, and I was hooked as a kid. At a uh, young age actually, like most of the guys probably here, it's uh, something we've always wanted to do for the most part, so. Most of my worst, any of my worst calls have to do with kids. Like nobody wants to deal with kids in any, in any capacity with calls and stuff like that, so my worst call will have to be doing CPR on a still bowing, you know. Seven, you know, several fires um, that, you know, we, we've either saved people or, or, or structures. We've had a lot of them. I guess the most exciting would have to be, uh, the most exciting and rewarding was in 1992. Matter of fact, it was May 28, 1992. We had a call for a building fire in the Claiborne district of town. I was the deputy chief, which is the shift commander. Uh, we arrived and we had a uh, young lady, a teenager, holding a uh, three-year-old baby on a fourth floor window. She was trapped. Dramatic rescue from a burning apartment building in Fitchburg this morning. A three-year-old boy had to be dropped from a top floor window. He was caught by a firefighter. His sister had to jump. The young lady that was the babysitter at the time dropped the three-year-old to me. I caught the baby. Uh, the baby kind of hit me, bounced off, landed on the ground, sitting up crying. Uh, she was engulfed in smoke at the time she was not in sight. And uh, I ran over and she held the baby out the window and she let it go from the 12 floor window. Uh, I was able to catch it and then uh, she proceeded to jump right after that. Uh, she just hit the ground. She actually ended up with uh, two fractured hips, burns to her back, uh, m multiple broken uh, ribs, uh, spinal injuries. She did survive also. The baby basically had a um, small burn on the back from the heat that was in the room that they were in before it dropped. A fire in Fitchburg reported in the news this morning. I saw your picture in the paper in the Globe this morning and uh, over breakfast called Dad, the Arbery said, we got to get this guy on the show today. Let's go from when you realized she was going to drop the baby while that baby's coming down those four stories towards you. How much are you thinking about it at that point? I just, all I thought is I've got to catch up. That's the That's only thing. It's a good thought to have, my yeah. Education, uh, a lot of the guys will go and get their uh, fire science degree. A lot of people are doing it online now. Our department is the 
department responsible in public safety for fire calls, hazmat. Uh, we all have to be emergency medical technicians. Every single engine company, ladder company, or the ambulance, we're all EMTs to start with. We have to be hazardous materials, uh, first responders. Here we have the dive unit, so a lot of us are divers. A lot of the guys are divers. And... Yeah, yeah, de definitely uh, hazmat and uh, dive team two things that are real big here. So you train all your firemen for those specialties? Correct. Our firefighters are all trained firefighters from, uh, from the Massachusetts State Firefighting Academy and they are also a minimum of uh, level of emergency medical technician, which is EMT. And uh, with the academy you get a lot of other classes that you can take. So I ended up becoming an instructor, an instructor at the academy also. Got my arson degree. I worked hard at getting to it. In high school I used to go to school and work out every day. Uh, so I was physically fit for the uh, physical end of it. And we do have a couple paramedics on the department. Uh, we do run an ambulance uh, that we run in the fire department and we contract with uh, a private ambulance company for two other ambulances that are dedicated to the city that run out of our fire stations. Uh, it, you know, there's slow days and there's busy days. Uh, in this city, there's more busy days than slow days, obviously. Um, moving all this apparatus, if there's a fire, you're gonna make all kinds of calls. Uh, to you know, electric department, water department, recall other firefighters in, recall mutual aid in from other communities. So it's not just it's not just dispatch the truck and that's it. It never it kind of never ends in here. We're not just firefighters anymore. You know, it's an array of things. Fire on. It, it's tough because unfortunately in this job we do see a lot of tragedy deal with death a lot. Um, I don't know if there's one in particular, um, but just all the ones where, where we've been, um, we've been there but maybe just a little too late or um, just, you know, unable to help when, when you really want to. Unfortunately, we do see some deaths. Uh, motor vehicle accident, airport road, father was a drug addict, son was in the car, They got in an accident. There was an EMT coming down the road. Got out of the car. Went over to check on the two injured parties. Father jumped in the EMT's car and took off. The son's head was wide open. Um, so we uh, got him out with the jaws. He was transported to, I think, Lemus Hospital at the time, and I never knew what happened. Never wanted to know what happened. That was probably the worst. It's pretty amazing. There's a kid from Lemus that got the shot of uh, Bozo. We call him Bozo. He used to do a lot of charity events as a clown. Yeah, and uh, this, is, this is just what happened in Fitchburg in 77. You can see it was a, a four-story brick building. And the fire was in a uh, pizza place, and this is the crews going in. It's actually Bozo's right there. They get killed. What happens? They went in the front and they had a back traffic explosion, and it blew them. This is you can see the guys pushing in the front door. And when it back traffic, we opened the window on the top floor because we were rescuing children. They were carrying children out of the building, and the whole face blew off the building. This is right at the time of impact. You can see stuff falling, and it's actually it's actually a better picture. I think I found the uh, building afterwards. It looked like a dollhouse. You can see somebody here. See the whole face of the building's gone, and you can see in the rooms. Oh, and as we, we had to dig through the rubble, we pulled out a uh, ten guys, but both of them made. This was the funeral in Fitchburg in '77. They came, five friends came from across the country. Oh man! Uh, first of all, I love being a fireman. It, it's the greatest job on, on the earth when you get to help people. Fitchburg is, uh, is, a, is a great community, especially for firefighting. Um, it, it's, a, uh, it's a unique city where it's, it's not the largest, it's not the smallest, but unfortunately uh, per capita in this, this city is kind of depressed now. Unfortunately, it's an old mill town. So as far as professionally speaking, uh, firefighting, this city keeps, uh, keeps us busy. Um, it's, it's a challenging for a fireman. And, and I, look, I look at that challenge and, and I wouldn't want it any other way. 
most of the guys' hobbies have to do with this place, but uh, I like going shooting, stuff like that. I like going down to Florida, <laughs> getting away from here. <laughs> so there's always that risk analysis when you're responding to a call as to well, how fast should I go and what am I going through and what are the odds it's really what it is. Um, and then, so that's what we call reading the call. Time of day, what the call is, where the call is, that all comes into play. And, uh, you know, you get, my adrenaline still gets going when I, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning and, you know, reported Bill and Fire. I haven't been here a long time and, uh, it, you know, I've seen a lot. Uh, but, you know, if we get a report back from Fire Alarm saying, you know, uh, Fire Alarm C2 be advised we have reported uh, victims trapped in the building. It does heighten your anxiety level a little bit. Once again, that's why we train, we get there. Uh, you know, we are professionals. Uh, a lot of these guys know their positions. I have to just put everybody in a place where I can use them most effectively.